Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got this question from John that I thought was a pretty good question about uh, consistent code versus the Boy Scout rule. And this is a problem that we have, I think, when you're ever working on a new project and you've got, or rather, you're working on a new job and you're exposed to some older source code. So he says, hey John, uh, I'm wondering if you've addressed this before, if you could point me to a video or a blog post. I don't think I have all that much, maybe briefly, but he said, I started working on a different project for my team. We're working with a client that has an existing app that is more than a few years old. The architecture is sound and the code is well organized. However, it's a bit dated and doesn't match the definition of what I would consider clean code. Since, we've uh, since we're a mixed team of internal and client developers, how would you approach this code base? Would you clean as you go? This would break consistency in the code base. Would you leave the code as is and try to match the existing standards for any new development or enhancements? Do you go clean or stay consistent? So this is a good question, right? I mean, so so let's think about this scenario. You've got a new code base, right? In this, or you've got some code base. It's got some coding standards that are not clean, but at least it's consistent, which a lot of times you don't even come into this, right? A lot of times applications are just, they don't have any kind of standard. They're not very well developed, uh, you know, but this, he says here, the architecture is sound and the code is well organized. So this is, um, <laughs> this is, this is a, a tough one. So in general, right, when I'm working with legacy code, what I usually recommend is creating this barrier, like this layer of abstraction where be, below this layer is gonna be the cruft, and then I'm creating this clean layer of separation in between, and everything above this is, is clean, is gonna use the new coding standard, is gonna have unit tests, is gonna be cleanly written, you know, and, and have that, that new standard. And so what I would do is basically go through the code base and as I'm working on stuff, I'm gonna try and move stuff and as I create new stuff, I'm gonna move stuff to this better architecture that I've created where everything is clean and it's gonna interface with the old stuff, right? So this way we're not just randomly changing stuff and changing convention and we, you know, we, but we're making progress towards this change. We know what, you know, so, so what it, a lot of times when I'm involved with a project like this, I'll draw up and I'll figure out what is the kind of the ideal architecture that I would like to have and then as I start working on pieces, I start moving them into that new architecture, right? That's the clean area. And everything that goes into the clean area stays clean and it can only communicate outside of it with the, with the cruft, the old stuff. Now, <clears throat> I think this is a good approach in general, right? Obviously, this is the approach that I take. And what it does is it allows you to continue to work on the existing system, not try and convert everything over, not get all mixed up and to have a very clear distinction where you're gonna write code a certain way. The old way, you know, if you're fixing bugs and that, if you can't move stuff over, but you're trying to move stuff over and it gives you a place to go. So you start building, like cleaning things as you go, building this sort of uh, clean zone where nothing is gonna get past that, right? If you can imagine that, that'll expand. Eventually the whole application becomes clean. But in this particular case, you've already got architecture that's sound and well organized. So, you know, there's this conflict between doing consistent, making it consistent, or what, what might be a slightly better clean code. It depends on how much of a departure this is. I think that's, that's one of the, the major factors. But I think the biggest factor here is how much change that you're gonna make and how much you're gonna maintain or work on this app. If you're gonna be working in this app a lot and maintaining this code and building on this code and doing lots of changes, then I'd be more inclined to start doing what I'm, what I'm telling you about, which is to start creating this clean zone where you have this new architecture that you've got or you've got a certain number of files. Some way you're dividing the project up in the system so that you have the, this very distinct, if it's in this area, in this sub-project we've created, however you're building that out, in this architecture zone that we've shown in this diagram, if it falls into this area, then you're using the clean code where we've got a new set of coding standards and principles and we're writing the code this way. If it's in the old one, then you, you continue to maintain it and make it consistent, but you try to move stuff into the new, into the new architecture, into the new area, right? So if there's significant changes, I would do that. If it's small, right? If it's small changes and you're not doing a lot, 
and you're just maintaining this code and it's already consistent and well organized, then I don't think it's probably worth it. Then just stick with the coding conventions, make the bug fixes here and there. You know, maybe if you tack on a new feature or something, you, you do that with the consistency, you know, of, of the existing system. And, and don't make these big changes. So, you know, in general, and, and it depends on how far of a departure this is, right? It, it's in general, I would say, in most cases, it's better to be consistent than it is to be as clean as possible or, or correct, right? And the reason why I would say that is because consistency will, uh, will give someone a lot of information about how to develop the code and the understanding and meaning of the code, which is really what we're trying to do. But, but if you were talking about, you know, just crap spaghetti code versus clean code, then crap spaghetti code usually doesn't have consistency anyway. And if it's written horribly and it does have some kind of consistency, it'd be better to move to the clean code. So this is, I kind of want to break this down because there's a bunch of different, you know, things to consider here. But in general, right, not knowing enough background here, I would say that the approach, my default approach in this case, is what I've what I explained in the beginning, is to isolate a portion of the code, come up with a new architecture, how things should be in my ideal world, and start moving pieces in there as I touch them, and then interfacing with the existing system from that from that new architecture, new area. Not trying to move everything over, not trying to do everything. And that and the approach, the the nice thing about that approach also is you don't create a lot of work that you don't need. So you're moving the pieces over as you're touching them. It's sort of like the Boy Scout rule, right? Except that instead of just cleaning up that code and, and fixing warnings and, and whatnot, you're actually taking that code and you're saying, okay, let me refactor this and move this into the clean area. This is the, we have this clean zone, this architecture pattern, you know, in, in this new architecture. And so that, I think that that's the default approach, but I would not go through all that if you're just making a few bug fixes and you're not really going to heavily maintain this, right? You got to be pragmatic and practical as well. So good question. I think, you know, this is always going to come up in code bases, cons existing code bases, consistency versus Boy Scout rule. And like I said, it's, there's a few different things. I think that general approach I've given you is going to work in most cases, but you know, in, in general, you know, you, if it's not a, if not if it's not a huge departure from what you would be doing, consistency is really really important. So, and that's and that's why again why I separate things out and have the clean area and have the old way. You know, in because they're both consistent, but it's only it's either one thing or the other. It's not all mixed up together. You know that you've made a clear division between we're making this transition. So anyway, I hope that helps you. If you have a question for me, email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to join the Facebook community and get some support and help and answers from, from other developers that are part of Simple Forever program or community, check out the Patreon campaign. I uh, would appreciate it and take care.